Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lone Vic and today we are going to go through an instructional video in my series of rules of play. We're going to learn how to play Trailblazer the John Moore Trail. This is a game designed by Dan R. Rice III with artwork by Andrew Bosley and the game was published by Mariposa Games. It's a game for one to four players in which you will be trekking the legendary John Muir Trail, hiking up from Happy Isles all up to Mount Whitney and ending up at Whitney Portal, as you can see by this elevation chart that illustrates the trail in a very detailed way. In this video, we will cover how to play the multiplayer version of the game. There will be a solo playthrough and an explanation of the solo rules in my video on my channel as well later on. And for now, let's dive in into the rules and how to set up the game for a multiplayer game. And remember, if you want to support what I'm doing here on this channel, you can always click the like button under the video, hit the subscribe and ring notification bell to be notified about new videos that are coming to my channel on a regular basis. And if you feel like it, you can always go down to the description where there is a link if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. And right now, without any further delay, let's dive into the setup. Okay guys, so I've got the majority of the setup already done and I will walk you through it. I'll walk you through what's on the table right now and I will add some additional elements. So the board, as you can see, is already here and is big. And this is the variant for all player counts. There is no alternative. And then you've got those four medallions that the game comes with. This one, the Trailblazer medallion, is the medallion that marks the first player. So hand it to the player who is going to be first. The rulebook suggests that this is the last person who went backpacking or trekking or hiking recently. So I will put this just near me. Then we've got this Windrose token, which we can place on this cleverly positioned Windrose over here. We've got this token that goes over here or medallion and we've got this elevation medallion that goes here and remember that those two should be with those shields with two victory points or two track points facing up. Then we've got four natural resources in the game and we should place the tokens for those resources in their respective places on the board. So we've got water over here, we've got wood over here, we've got wind over here and you've got fire over here so it's like water earth wind and fire you know four elements kind of in this way the next thing we have are the 16 journey arrowhead tokens that come with the game we should shuffle these obviously select one that we place in this top space marked times two victory points and then divide the rest into stacks of five place them face down in each designated space over here, like I'm doing right now, and uncover the top shield from each stack. The personal resources, food, water, or bottled water, sleep, and endurance should be placed here next to the respective markers, and also the hardship tokens that I have over here, the ones with those pluses, should be placed somewhere near the board. Shuffle the trail cards and place them in the designated space over here. Shuffle the field guide cards and place them in a deck face down near the board and display top five cards in the respective places from left to right. The game also comes with weather tokens, which look like this. And if you have the Kickstarter edition with all the wooden components and everything like I do, you get the bag in which you can throw them into so that you can randomly draw them during the game. If you don't have the baggy, if this is a retail edition, just take those weather tokens and place them face down near the board, randomized, so that you can flip up a random one each round. We've got three destination decks, the green, the blue, and the brown, and you should separate them, shuffle them, and uncover three cards from the green deck in the beginning of the game. Last but not least, the game comes with two types of JMT markers or John Muir trail markers, and you should take three white ones from all that you have in the box and three green ones and place them 
in the white spaces along the trail and the green ones randomly in the green spaces along the trail and all, all the extra tokens should be returned to the box. After you place them, you can flip all of them face up. There we go. Now for the player setup, guys. Each player takes a player board in their color. In my case, it's red. And I'll show you the setup for one player, basically, because it's all the same, no matter what player counts we have. And you take matching color pieces. Your hiker, your tent, and your victory point marker, which you I've already placed here on the zero space. Your tent stays on your player board for now and your camper should go onto the space called Happy Isles. You also should have 12 hexagonal backpack gear and each player has identical set of 12 different types of gear which you'll be putting into your backpack. You will also need track tokens with those shoes printed on them and you place two somewhere in the general resources and three of them in the beginning of the game on your player board. Each player starts with six natural resources, two water, two wood or earth, one wind and one fire, and also with seven personal resources, three food, two bottled waters, one ZZZs or sleep, and one endurance token and place them on the board in the respective places. You have also four exploration bonus markers which should be placed near the player board as well. And each player also randomly chooses a map pack and those packs are bound with this metal ring. And after randomly choosing it, place it near your player board and also take one player aid. The last thing you do is you deal three cards, three trail cards to each player. So here are my three cards. And now you are ready to start the game. So first, let's talk about the general overview of the game. And then we will dive in to how the turn flows. So guys, Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail, takes place over the course of 12 days or rounds and you'll be using weather tokens to mark which day or which round it is. So after placing the 12th weather token, you'll know that this is the last round of the game and you'll be hiking along the legendary John Muir Trail. Each player and each hiker will experience daily encounters. You will choose to explore destinations along the trail, acquire natural and personal resources, discover and observe sights and sounds from the environment, and you'll have to face weather conditions as well. Each of the 12 days is divided into three phases, the sunrise, daytime, and sunset. And in each of those, players will be doing different things. Now, when it comes to the resources, we've got two types of resources. The natural resources, like I said, earth, water, wind, and fire, which you collect here on the top of your player board, and the maximum that you can have of all of those resources tallied up together is 12. And now here you've got personal resources, so it's food, bottled water, Z's or sleep tokens, and endurance. And you've got dots here under those spaces which tell you how many of each of those tokens you can have. So you can have a maximum of four food, four bottled water, three sleep tokens, and three endurance tokens, and this number doesn't change throughout the game. And all in all, you will be basically placing your trail tokens or track tokens with those shoes on different spaces on the map, performing actions one by one until every player runs out of those tokens, placing your gear in the backpack, racing to get points from various places and also some scores at the end of the game. And that's in general, in the general gist, it. So now let's talk about what we can do during the game. So first, the first phase is the sunrise phase. And in each sunrise phase, the first player, so the player who has the trailblazer token in this round, takes the bag or approaches the flipped down weather tokens, draws one of those weather tokens and places it on the respective day, thus marking which round we are in. And those weather tokens, apart from marking which round we are in, also have one more function. Some of those tokens 
will show you, for example, sunny weather or cloudy weather. And those tokens do not mean anything apart from some thematic, well, description. Some tokens, like for example, rain or wind or heat, snow and thunderstorm, will have, as you can see in the bottom left corner, a resource icon. And usually it's one of the natural resources that you will have to use in uh, this case. And if this token is placed like I did right now in the round, that means that when you are progressing along the track with your meeple using the map pack that you have, this is the additional cost that you will have to pay. So in the first round, each travel action along the trail will cost you an additional one wood or earth token, so this green one. If the weather token doesn't show any icon in the bottom left corner, there is no additional cost. And the second thing that you do during the sunrise phase is that you use your trail card. So in the beginning of the game, every player has three. And and in the sunrise phase, you draw an additional one. And from those four cards, you need to play one card. And now there are three things that you need to know. There are two types of cards. The green cards, which are the travel cards. There are also red cards, which are called obstacle cards. And also you can play any of those cards in an additional way. So first, if you are playing a travel card, there are two things that you collect. The resources which are on the right side of the card go onto your player board. So for example, for this card, I would take one wind resource from here. And the second thing is that on the left side of those travel cards, those green cards, you have an icon of one of the pieces of the backpack gear. And now if this gear is not in your backpack yet, this card allows you to load it into your backpack. So now I would take this gear and load it into the first space on the bottom left. If, however, the card that I play shows an gear icon that I already have in my backpack, this allows me to elevate using my tent and moving it on the first free space along this very long track. And we'll get back to this later on as well. Now, the obstacle cards play a bit differently. Because they are obstacles, then they are more difficult to get rid of from your hand. And if you have an obstacle card to play, you have to have the piece of gear that's depicted on the left side of the card in your backpack in order to play the card. And playing this card does not allow you to elevate. It only allows you to play the card, basically. This is the condition for playing the card. And on the right side, you have the reward. And usually those rewards from the obstacle cards are slightly better than from the travel cards, but not always. And there is only 16 of those obstacle cards and I think 64 of the travel cards, so the ratio is pretty fair. And now the last third thing that you need to know about those cards is that during the sunrise phase, when you need to play your card, and you're doing it, remember, one by one, uh, starting from the first player, you can always play one of those cards that you have into the discard pile without using any of those effects of the card just to get one water. So this is also a possibility. And in this case, if you start the game with three cards, you grab one and play one, you will always circulate three cards in your hand. And this is the almost only opportunity, unless a game effect tells you otherwise, to play one of those cards during the sunrise phase. Okay, so now we can move into the daytime phase and talk a lot about what's going on in the board, because in the daytime phase, you'll be using your track tokens in order to do different things on the board. Additionally, you've got two of those track tokens here in the resources and you will be gaining them if you elevate your tent up to a space which shows a track token here or here and you will be able to collect one of those. So now let's talk about the actions that you can do using the track tokens. 
The first one is hiking, and hiking is the only action that each player has available in their color over here, which means that you can take only one of those each day. Now we've got 12 days. You have 10 spaces to cover along the John Muir Trail. And this means that there are only two days in which you can not move on the trail. Can, you can skip advancing and use your track tokens to do something else. Because there is one important thing. If by the end of the game you don't reach the last space, you don't finish your track, you won't be scoring anything at the end of the game. So this is obligatory. You have to reach here in order to score and have a chance at winning. So what do we do when we hike? When you hike, you have to move to the next space on the track and you have to pay the cost. And the cost can come usually from three different sources. The first cost is the cost of the respective card in your map pack. And for each player, this cost will be different. So you locate the map pack card with the same number as the space you don't want to go on to. And you take a look at, for example, here for the first space, I need to pay one wood. And later for the second space, one wood and one wind. The second cost that you need to include is the cost from the weather tokens, if any. And the third one is the cost from those John Muir Trail tokens. The white ones give you a requirement of gear that you have to have in your backpack in order to enter the space. And the green ones mean that you need to spend a personal resource that's depicted. And thus you slowly trek along the John Muir Trail. Now, if you want to advance, if you want to do the hike action, but you cannot pay some of the cost, then for each item, for each resource that you can't cover with your resources or with your backpack, for example, or with your personal resources, you take one hardship token and place it near your player board. And those will be negative points at the end of the game. Additionally, the first player to reach the last space will get five victory points, the second one will get three, and the last one will get one victory point. And advancing on this trail also does two things. One is that there is this space called High Sierra Lodge, which is space number four. Now, if a player reaches here or passes the High Sierra Lodge, they can start using these spaces on the map. So the High Sierra Lodge is not available for anyone on spaces one, two, and three. And the second thing is that in the upper right corner of each of those spaces, you have the color of those destination cards. So if a player enters a space with the blue destination cards, you collect all the green ones and display three new destination cards from the blue deck and this deck will be used from now on for all the players. And the first player to reach space 9, which has the red icon for destination cards, means that you'll be using the red deck of destination cards from now on. Okay, a lot of information for now, but the next actions will be way simpler. Now, the next action that we'll talk about is acquiring. And acquiring are actions that are here next to the natural resources or personal resources over here. So if you place your track token here, you collect water in the amount shown in this big icon over here. So you get four water here, you get three wood here, two wind over here, or one fire over here. If you covered the John Muir Trail up to space four or further, you can also place your token here for three food, here for two bottled water, here for one sleep token, here for one endurance token, or here to remove one hardship token that you've collected already in the game. And those spaces are limited. Each of these spaces for natural resources can be used by one player 
per day, so there is only one circle. If it's a four-player game, the second circle is active, which means that two players can use each natural resource. In the High Sierra Lodge, those three last spaces can be used only once per day by one player, and these spaces are, like this icon suggests, unlimited and everyone can use them. And while collecting any of the resources, please remember about your limits. So individual limits for the personal resources printed below the spaces and a total of 12 natural resources on your player board. Now, the next action that you can do is discover one of those cards that we have over here. So those field guide cards. If you want to do that, you take your token, you place it in the space from which you take the card, you pay the cost over here. So it's two water, water and wood, water and wind, water and fire, and two natural resources apart from water, but different ones. You take the card, you add it to your collection, and you do two things. You either take the rewards printed here, or victory points, for example, and if the card depicts a gear, you add the gear into your backpack if you don't have it in your backpack yet, or if you have the particular gear icon, you elevate. And now let's quickly talk about the elevate action because, well, we've used this phrase already twice. So the elevate action can be triggered every time or almost every time you see this hexagonal gear icon for the backpack. So they are usually here and here on the destination cards. And when you collect a card from the field guide or from the destination cards, two things can happen. Like I said, if you don't have the specific gear in your backpack yet, you just place it in your backpack on the first space from the left and you fill the rows from bottom up. If, however, you already have this gear in your backpack, you take your tent token and you move it either to the first space if it wasn't on the board yet, or you move it to the next empty space along this elevation chart. And there can be more tents in one space than one, so players can share. And every single time you reach an award on this track, you get the award. So it's either one personal resource, one track token, or taking one of those shields from any of those three stacks for you, and this will score you points at the end of the game. And when you take one of those shields, you flip the other one below face up. If you get to the end of the track, you're the first player, you'll get seven points, the second player will get four, the third player two, and the fourth player one, and each, and each consecutive elevation after that will grant you one additional victory point. There is also, I will remove my tent from here, then there is also this space here on the elevation track which has this elevation track token. The first player who reaches this collects this token or medal from the elevation chart for themselves, and this will be worth either two points at the end of the game if not flipped. But you can also flip it during the game, so it will be worthless at the end of the game, but if you flip it, you'll be able to put your track token on any space that's already covered by another player and unavailable to you on the map once. So this is kind of like a joker move for your track token and you can't place your track token here again, even flipping those uh, medallions or medals. Okay, so that's elevation done. And talking about the backpack still, one more thing. If you fill in the bottom row with three gears in your backpack, you get the reward for this row. Then if you start filling and fill completely the next row, you get this reward and then this reward. And the first player who fills in this third row also gets the Windrose token, which works in the same way. So either two points at the end of the game or flip it in order to use a space that's already covered. And the first player who fills up the whole backpack gets five victory points. The second one gets three and the fourth, third one gets one. A lot going on. Okay, so we've got the discover action already covered and now let's talk about explore which is here. 
Now, if you want to explore, and where is my token here? We've got one, two, three spaces in a two-player game, four spaces in a three-player game, and four, five spaces in a four-player game. So if you place your track token on explore, you can take one of the destination cards that are visible. And the destination cards have a cost in resources that you have to pay. They have victory points that you get automatically when you collect the card and pay for it. And also a gear icon, which allows you to either put a gear into your backpack or elevate if the gear is already in your backpack. And the last thing that those discovery cards do is that they have those four types of icons over here and those correspond to those four icons on your player board. So the first time you collect a discovery card with any of those icons, you take this discovery token respectively and cover up this space and trigger this one-time effect. So you can trigger all of them once when taking a first card of this color. And the first player to cover all four spaces here gets nine victory points, the second player gets five, and the third player gets three. And let's talk about these effects right now. The first one says that you can take two additional cards right now into your hand from those trail cards and play one of them and from now on your hand size is four instead of three. The second one gives you one card from this field guide deck which you flip from the top you collect all of the effects without paying any cost. So both gear which can mean elevation as well and the resources. The third one allows you to either place one gear in your backpack, which you don't already have in your backpack, or elevate if you have anything in your backpack already. And the last one allows you to take two natural resources, but they have to be two different ones. You can't take two of the same. So this is the explore action basically, already covered for the destination cards. And then we have the kind of tinier actions, or at least in my head those are tinier actions because there are, they are very inconspicuous on the board. One of those actions is the mountain pass, which can be taken only by one player per day. As you can see there is only one space and this mountain pass action means that you take two cards from the uh, trail deck into your hand and you can play two cards discarding them but you won't get any backpack benefits. But you can play either green or red cards in this way ignoring those backpack icons so you will get only the rewards which are on the right side totally ignoring the left side of the cards. So this might be a good way either to get some additional resources or to get rid of those pesky obstacle cards. And now this token, under it there is one additional space hidden because this action that you perform over there with this first light token allows you to collect this medallion for yourself. So if I, for example, place my track token over here, I collect this medallion and I collect any water that's on it. And we'll get to that, how to get water on this token. But this medallion allows me to be the first player, so get the Trailblazer medallion at the beginning of the next round. So during the sunset phase, I would return this medallion here and collect the Trailblazer medallion being the first player, even if it shouldn't be my turn. And that's basically it for the daytime phase with all the actions. And now let's talk about sunset. So once all of the players use all of their track tokens, whether they have three or four or five because they've already uh, elevated enough on the elevation chart, the sunset phase starts and it has five stages. First stage is consuming one item of food and one item of bottled water or if you don't have any bottled water you can use two natural water instead. Each player has to do that and if you cannot be consume any food or any water because you don't have any, you get one hardship token for each of those. So we can get maximum two hardship tokens this way if you can't consume any. Then you collect all your track tokens from the board. You refresh the field guide cards. So if there is a 
card remaining on this space, it gets discarded, everything gets moved, and you add new cards into the field guide, you resolve the first light medallion. So if somebody has collected the first light medallion, they return it and collect the first player token. And if nobody has collected it, you add one water resource over here and that's it. And if a player had the medallion and returns it, you also add the one water for this. So this is how the water gets here. And remember that when you take the action of this medallion, you will collect all of the water that's on the medallion. And if nobody had the medallion and the Trailblazer token hasn't changed hands yet, you pass the Trailblazer token to the next player in turn. And thus you start day two with the sunset sunrise phase and the weather and so forth and so on. Okay guys, so you will be doing this for 12 days and at the end of day 12 you will also do only the first stage of the sunset phase. So on day 12 the only thing that you do is you consume one food and one bottled water or take hardship tokens if you can't and that's it. You don't exchange these cards, you don't return your track tokens, you don't do the passing of the first player medallion, nothing of those, only food and water. And then final scoring. So each hardship token that you get will increase your negative points by a ratio shown in the rule book. So as you can see, this is a pretty steep ratio. So if you have one hardship token, you will get minus four victory points, two will give you minus nine, three minus 16. Five tokens will give you minus 35 points, which can be very, very painful. And if you've got six or more, each token is worth minus 10 at the end of the game. Next, if you have any of the two medallions, so this or this one unflipped, you will get the two victory points. Next, you look at the field guide cards which you've been collecting throughout the whole game from here. And again, referring to the rulebook, a set of five unique field cards, so one of each color, and there are five colors as you can see. Luckily, this is how they distribute it. Blue for nature, yellow for birds, pink for flowers, green for trees, and brown for animals. So if you have a unique set of five, each set is worth seven. If you have a unique set of four, each of those is worth four points. A unique set of three is worth two, and a unique set of two is worth one. Singular cards are worth nothing. Then all the shields that you've collected from advancing on the elevation chart are being scored for their particular effects. And those effects vary, but they are pretty clear. And last but not least, this shield that's here with this times two marker is scored by every player in the game. And the results from this shield are multiplied by two, as with this symbol over here. And after you've tallied up all the points, the person who has the most wins the game. If there are any ties in the final trail point scoring, they are resolved by the order of arrival at the end of the John Muir Trail, so to Mount Whitney. So the winner will be the player who arrived at the end first. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for being here. I hope that this helped you clarify the rules for the game, at least on a basic level. If you have any questions or if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'm trying to respond and be as helpful as I can with clarifying any doubts for the rules for the games that I'm doing here and filming here. And for now, thanks for being here. My name was Lone Vic. This was Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. And once again, if you want to support what I'm doing here on my channel, you can click the like button under the video, hit the subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified about new videos on my channel coming on a regular basis. And also in the description to the video, there is a link if you want to buy me a cup of coffee. I hope you are having a great day. Trailblazer, John Muir Trail, a great game from Kickstarter. My name is Lone Vic. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.